Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Saurabh Sharma and we are doing introduction to Chinese studies course. Today we are going to do the third lecture on Confucianism. Now the word Confucianism obviously comes from the name Confucius who was a great Chinese philosopher. Uh, Confucius is a Latinized version of the Chinese name Kung Fu Zi, which simply means Master, Master Kung. Confucius was born in uh, 551 BCE at uh, Chufu in Shangtung province. Uh, during those days, it was part of the Lu state. Uh, uh, this is the spring and autumn period. So this was a period of uh, weakening of the Chou dynasty. As a result, there were many regional states which had come up. And so uh, Confucius belonged to one such state, the Lu state. Now Confucius was uh, always engaged in affairs of the state, he tried to serve his own state Lu and during this course he, he, he derived certain principles, certain ideas and those ideas came to be known as Confucianism. Now in Confucianism, basically uh, he, he wanted to emphasize on tradition, the tradition of Chinese civilization beginning with the the mythical sage kings like the yellow emperor and the other uh, emperors who, who were basically deities in, in Chinese society worshipped by the people. Plus also the tradition of the first three dynasties, Xia, Shang and Chou dynasty. Especially uh, Confucius emphasized on Duke of Chou was the younger brother of the first Chou king after the death of his brother Wu, King Wu died. And uh, Duke of Chou served as a regent to his nephew, King Chang. And he was a, a philosopher. Uh, he, he gave the concept of mandate of heaven. He was a statesman. He divided the land among the Shang elite so that there is no opposition to Chou rule. Okay, so uh, overall, he was uh, considered to be a great personality, uh, a sage. And so uh, Confucius idealized the Duke of Chou. And he believed that uh, the Chinese society had degraded because it had given up the principles of those uh, ancient uh, sages. Now these principles were basically related to concepts like filial piety, that means sh showing respect to your ancestors, uh, worshipping ances dead ancestors and also cultivation of virtue. So he emphasized on the cultivation of virtue which is through education. So in this lecture we are going to look uh, into details of, uh, uh, of all these concepts in Confucianism. Confucius in his own lifetime was not very successful. His political career was not very successful. He tried to help different rulers initially in his own state Lu. Later on he traveled to some other states, uh, but uh, there are very few people who, who listened to him. But during this course of his travels, he, he collected a number of disciples who became his followers and after the death of Confucius in uh, 479 BCE, the disciples continued to develop Confucianism. Uh, Confucius died in his uh, hometown, uh, he, he is buried in Chufu and there is a, a temple uh, to Confucius there. Large number of Chinese people go to Chufu for pilgrimage because uh, Confucius is worshipped as the revered ancestor by the Chinese people. Okay, so let us look at uh, some of the important things in Confucianism. First, let us look at the important books which uh, are the source of Confucian uh, philosophy. These books are uh, attributed mostly to Confucius and his disciples. Okay, let us look at them. Uh, the four books, there are four books. So, the first book is Great Learning, Great Learning, Ta Sui, Ta Sui, Great Learning. Uh, this uh, is a, a commentary on a chapter of Book of Rites by a student of Confucius, Tseng Zi, Tseng Zi, 
was a student of Confucius. He wrote a commentaries on uh, several uh, chapters of commentary on uh, great, uh, so that is known as great learning. The second important book is Doctrine of the Mean. Doctrine of the Mean. This is attributed to Zisi. Zisi was the grandson of Confucius and a student of Changzi. Uh, then the third one is the Analex. Analex, of course, are the speeches and discussions of Confucius with, uh, with his disciples. For example, Yan Hui is a famous disciple of Confucius, who is an important character in the Analects. And this book contains various teachings of Confucianism. Then the fourth important uh, book among the four books is Mencius. Mencius are again speeches and, and conversations of one of the followers of Confucius, uh, Mencius. So he, he, Mencius is generally considered the second great philosopher in the Confucian tradition after Confucius himself. Okay, so his speeches and conversations are also part of these four uh, books. Then there are the five classics. Now, I, I, I need to mention that uh, these four personalities here, Zhengzi, Zisi, Yanhui and Mencius, these four are known as the four great sages of Confucianism. So, after Confucius, these are the four great Confucian philosophers. And in fact, uh, still now in, in Taiwan, there is a special position for the descendants of these four sages. Of course, Chilsa is a descendant of Confucius himself. So, so that is the descendant of Confucius. So, they have a very important position in the Taiwanese government, um, uh, ritualistic, basically a ritualistic position. Of course, in the mainland China, it is under communist regime, so no such post exists. Then there are the five classics. The five classics are, first one is the classic of poetry. Now, these are various songs, uh, hymns and eulogies to ancestors and sages and uh, deities. And it is believed that they were composed in the early Chou period. And uh, basically, it is believed that Confucius compiled all these songs in, in the form of a book. Second important work is the book of documents. Uh, traditionally, it, it consists of 58 chapters. And it, it cover it. These are records of uh, uh, the uh, mythical period, the mythical sage kings, the Xia dynasty, the Shang dynasty, and the Zhou dynasty. Okay, so so th these are uh, uh, sources for Chinese history of that period. Then the third book is Book of Rites. Rites basically refers to rituals. Okay, so there are forty nine books, and these are mostly from the late Zhou and early Han period. So, this is basically after uh, Confucius, many of these uh, rituals that were performed were compiled in the form of book. Number four is I Ching. It is famous as, uh, this book is famous as I Ching. Uh, in, in Chinese, it will be I Ching uh, or, or, or book of changes. Now, this is a book on divination and cosmology. There are many mystical uh, things, how to predict future. It is quite popular in the West, uh, in the spiritual circles, new age circles. Okay, so, this was the fourth classic and the fifth is Spring and Autumn Annals. These are historical records of the state of Lu to which Confucius belonged. So, together these four books and five classes are the sources of Confucianism. And in, in, in China, these were the, this was basically the syllabus for the civil service exam. So, if you wanted to be a civil servant, a Mandarin, you had to study all these four, uh, all, all, all these works. You have to master them and, and write long essays based on these uh, four books and five classics. Okay, so, these are the sources of Confucianism. Then let us look at some of the ideas within Confucianism. What is Confucianism all about? The first important aspect of Confucianism is the education system. Uh, Confucius emphasized a lot on education. A person has to be educated and Co Confucius himself was an educator with a large number of disciples. The goal of Confucian education is not technical education. It's not about acquiring skills to to uh, earn a living. It's about cultivating your character, which which is called as gentleman cultivation. So the goal of education is to make someone a gentleman. The Chinese word is chun zi. It means Lord's son. So it's it's uh, basically means uh, becoming an aristocratic person. Okay, and and aristocratic person in the sense of learning. Okay. Uh, so, you have to basically go to a master. So, th there is a need for a teacher. So, the person has to, a pupil has to approach a master, a teacher and learn from that teacher. 
and the teacher should teach the examples of the past sages. Okay, so, so the way the past sages have, have behaved, those behaviors should be taught, those aspects of the behavior should be taught to the pupil by the master. As a result, the pupil is supposed to develop what are known as five cardinal virtues. Okay, and then you, if, if you are able to cultivate these five virtues, then you are considered to be a gentleman in, in Confucianism. So, let us see what are the five cardinal virtues, which um, uh, in, in exact translation actually means five constants. Uh, the first one is run. Run means benevolence. Benevolence refers to being kind hearted. Okay, if you see someone in difficulty, someone in pain, you, you should be broad minded enough to help that person. Okay, you, you should not be arrogant, you should be kind to people. So, that is the concept of benevolence. So, that is the first virtue that needs to be cultivated in a gentleman. The second one is E. E means righteousness. Righteousness means the right behavior, how to behave in a proper way with people. Okay. So, so you know, there is a proper code, code of conduct for a gentleman. You cannot uh, behave like, uh, like a, a ruffian. You have to be very, very uh, civilized and cultivated. Okay. So, that is righteousness. The third virtue is li. Li means rights. Rights basically means rituals or propriety that uh, if, if you see some an elder person, you should bow down before the elder person. You should respect the king. Uh, uh, you should, uh, the way you should behave with women. Okay, so, so these are all rituals and, and, and you have to make offerings to the ancestors and the gods. Uh, the, it includes all aspects of life. Basically, rights include like how do you wake up in the morning, how do you dress, how do you go to sleep, how do you eat. So, all these aspects are covered in rights. So, a person should be expert in all these daily rituals. That is li. The fourth uh, virtue is chu. Chu means wisdom. Wisdom means the ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. Okay. So, uh, this is the uh, fourth virtue. Then the fifth one is sin. Sin means integrity, honesty, okay, loyalty. Okay. So, you have a particular duty, you have to perform that duty without being corrupt, okay, without, you know, uh, without escaping from duty, you should be dedicated to your duty. And, uh, so, these are the five cardinal virtues and if you have all these five, then you are considered to be a truly uh, a good uh, gentleman, okay, a truly uh, a, a true Confucian pupil. Now, so although Confucius gave his, his educational philosophy, there is a dispute among his disciples on, on certain aspects of this. As a result, there are two broad subdivisions within his educational philosophy. Now, these two subdivisions are represented by two great philosophers who came after Confucius. First one is Mencius, whom I have already mentioned. Okay. Mencius is also a Latinized name. Uh, Mencius is Latinized version of Meng Tzu, Master Meng. Okay. So, when the Portuguese, they went to the uh, Chinese court, they, they basically Latinized the names of these two great philosophers because these were the two most famous, Confucius and Mencius. And, and, and the second one is Sun Tzu. Okay. Sun Tzu. So, Sun Tzu or Master Sun. Now, what is the difference between the uh, two philosophers? According to Mencius, human nature is innately good. From within human beings, all human beings are good. And the goal of education is to bring out those good qualities from within a human being. So, according to him, education should be free flowing it should not be very strict okay every, every student should uh, should be allowed to develop according to his own tendencies okay keep the student away from uh, corrupt practices but don't use very strict punishments don't make the students uh, memorize a lot of things because all uh, all the learning would be understood by the student in the course of time so that is the purpose of education to give direction to a student, so the student can develop the qualities which are already within him. Uh, so, so uh, based on this, he believed that there are, say, say, the cardinal. If you look at the cardinal virtues, he believes that gradually, in the course of a, a, a child's development, 
the cardinal virtues automatically emerge. Okay. So, for example, benevolence. How does benevolence emerge? According to Mencius, uh, what happens is that seeing suffering in the world, a child gradually starts developing distress. So, whenever a child sees someone in difficulty, someone in pain, there is a distress that develops within that child. Okay. That as a result, as a result, benevolence emerges from that child. Okay. He start, starts becoming kind towards others. Okay. So, that has to be, the teacher has to cultivate that quality and not let the pupil become corrupt or deviate from that innate goodness. Second one, righteousness. How does